welcome back to the channel guys last week ordeal review did relative numbers to the video itself so you know so we're gonna keep the energy going this week again make sure you like comment and subscribe for more ordeal content we're gonna have some discussion videos coming we got some things being worked on um now like we did with the last chapter review we're just gonna be scrolling through the chapter you feel me we're just talking about different points of the chapter you feel me so like before like the chapter comment on the chapter subscribe to ordeal on webtoon and on youtube and subscribe to me and like the video and comment on the video do i gotta keep saying this is y'all just not gonna anyway let's get started with the review for chapter 86 of ordeal so now just like before when brent, whenever brent does the preview it's always indicative of what's going to happen who we're going to be focusing on um for the chapter in of itself right so now the very first panel i know with the rocky book they, he says that the very first panel of your initial chapter is supposed to captivate the audience the very first panel we get three different people we get the goat jamie altham thomas we get the goat tevin matthias charles you feel me and then we get the the goat anton king you feel me and so now we're gonna know that this chapter is mostly about them when I initially did the reaction, um, I thought that this portion right here, hold on, because we're still in the in the um, in the preview phase. I thought that the very initial portion of the current events of the chapter, I thought this was Jorn. I thought this was Jorn because Jorn has a similar tint around his fingers for the immortal hide. Whenever he just uses it on a portion of his body, I should have known by the sky itself that that wasn't Jorn because there would have been some trees around here because Jorn and Shay is still in a different location I think they're still either A in the training location or they're ready at a specific location and I'm guessing it's going to be closer or the closest to uh, um, the, the box of life and death or the, the building where the boxes of life and death or the location where the boxes of life and death is located you feel me and so I thought this was Val, but the fact that you get her, she's commanding the troops now. We remember when she was initially introduced, she was one of the grunts. And so we see the progression not only on the hero side, but the progression of the army on the villain side as well. We don't often really get to see that. We usually just get to see like the end result of them being successful in, in their endeavors. But then the next time we see them, they're promoted. But this time we actually get to see the entire transition of that promotion, not only how she is as a commander because during parts of this chapter she's trying to use their numbers to their advantage while they don't necessarily have the training necessary to be able to keep up with these soldiers in my opinion even with the especially with these titan technology incorporated into them uh one thing i do enjoy is the other inspector actually giving the command because one thing that's important in war, or at least in previous points of war, I'm still relevant now, but more, more like 1800s, 1700s, and before type of war, the you have the one commander. He has to actually have the the respect of his troops for them to listen to him. So when he said hold, yes, it's a chain of command, but they also respect his strategy as well. Once he told them to hold, you feel me? Because he gives the position to hold the troops, but he tells them to fire the weapons. Now, I, I love how you see that. So, even if he says, like, yeah, fire the weapons, shooting fish in the barrel, hold troops, but fire the weapons. You see that in a chapter. And so, you kind of can see, like, a little bit of the strategy being incorporated in this war. And if you just have, like, a, just a ton of people just throwing hands, that's not really a war. That's a battle royale. You need commanders. And one of the things that I really enjoyed about this chapter, um, it's a little bit further in, but we can talk about it now since we're talking about commanders, is that when he said, if you identify anybody as the commander, you feel me, you, you kill them. That way, the troops don't know what to do. They don't know exactly what's going on. Although, Inspector Ian and, um, um, uh, I can't think of, Lieutenant, I'm just calling him Lieutenant, I can't think of his name right now. Lieutenant, although they actually had the, um, the element of surprise or they pretty much speed blitzed everyone when they were still like running towards them they wasn't expecting them to come at them that fast they're wiping out these titan soldiers with ease 
but they wasn't there when they actually killed, uh, well, not killed, but when they actually extracted the information from the prime minister of Greenland. You feel me? So they wouldn't necessarily know who exactly the commander is, which is fire. So you just see them mowing down a bunch of soldiers. And that's like one of the, one of the fire things in the chapter. Is one guy, this guy right here, who I thought, I thought he had like a boy type talent because you see him, it looks like he put the the, the shells itself into, uh, those look like 50 caliber shells. But he looks like he, he he stopped their their motion in of itself, you feel me? So either A, I feel like he either has a, a haste type talent where he can pretty much take the inertia away from people, basically slowing things down or taking the inertia away from objects or the potential energy away from objects, and thus just slowing everything down or stopping it completely, you feel me? As long as it's within that small vicinity. However, that small vicinity also makes me think that it's a, a talent in of itself, like everything within the circle is in his control. But we don't get to see him actually fire it back or anything of that nature. So let me know what you guys think, what his talent is down below this guy right here. It, it was a fire. It was kind of fire, I'm not going to lie. So now we got the lieutenant going crazy. And although he's dead, like I said, they speed blitzed in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? I got killed in the middle of the chapter. You feel me? Wolf Nara right there. He got smoked. You feel me? But one thing that's really important is not him mowing everyone down. It's actually this portion right here. This is probably one of the most important portions for this part of the chapter. And the reason I say that is because it shows you that they are at war. You feel me? These Titan soldiers think that these cold soldiers and um, these people with the Titan technology have their morals um, pretty much be being led in war by their morals. And we can clearly see that this is not the case. And when you say, what, you're going to arrest me? He's used to actually that that moralistic compass guiding the protagonist, but it's war. You you can't spare any chances. So when the lieutenant just shoots him in the head blatantly after that question, it goes to show you what what kind of battlefield this is going to be. This is going to be one of those battlefield that drags out everything in someone that emotionally breaks some of these soldiers. Some some that emotionally not emotionally but mentally break. May it may mentally break one of our, one of our cast members. You feel me? And that's just one of the things I kind of thought about. When I seen this portion of the chapter, fire, you feel me? So now we got expected Ian. He's the person who has the most experience with the Titan technology. We know when it was initially sold in season one that it was a, a prototype. Um, he has two spears like before, but the fact that he just gets this AOE slash fire, you feel me? The transition from him hopping on the horse, him unsheathing his weapon, you feel me? And jumping off the horse and then killing what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people in one fell swoop. Fire. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. That's fire. You feel me? So now he also pretty much activates his jets as well. He switched over to Tevin and Anton. I'm thinking Tevin and Anton was gonna fight Kagaya, you feel me? Just like they start to fight this chapter. However, we have some dialogue, you feel me? It seems that Anton is like usually expressed in his character throughout the story that he's the most laid back he doesn't really pay too much attention to the the intricate details of what's going on but when he seen the guy he said hey man you're the guy who killed my uncle man he's not my uncle but he's my uncle man so he doesn't necessarily care who he is it's just one of those that he affected him so now you see actually anton is getting angry and anton is usually the neutral you feel me and the fact that he's kind of getting angry right now tevin is hey tevin he's done something kind of different this uh this part of the season because we know that with when shay kills the fish guy i can't think of his name right now he has the the talent where if he smells blood and lick or ingests blood he goes into frenzy shark mode I think it's like season one, episode five through seven. And when Shay kills him, Tevin has this dialogue like, I wish I didn't let you shoulder that burden by yourself. If only I, I would have noticed what's going on. And after that, Shay changes as a character. He's more blood bloodthirsty now, you feel me? Bloodlusted, you feel me? Because he's it's more of necessarily putting a permanent stop to the evil rather than using the ethics of today's society and arresting them. He is more of like, all right, we're just going to kill him. 
And so with Tevin, we see that Kagaya kind of affected him. He affected all the Wolf Cubs personally. And so he, he doesn't even necessarily want to just like beat him and, and secure the passage. He wants to kill him at, the, at this point. He wants to pretty much make this man paralyzed. He wants to break his neck. And so Tevin always been kind of like the lighthearted one in a group in regards to uh, what they should do with their opponents. He's always never been the, he's never really been the one to want to kill his opponent. And we see it with Gatsgon that broke Tevin. We see that it broke him because he was partially in high form. You know I mean? uh, so mentally he wasn't really able to be the tank that everyone needed because once the tank is broken it's of no use so he, he couldn't really manifest his high whether it was due to exhaustion because he did go into overdrive and um in leo form you feel me in lion high form but mentally you can see throughout the his, the rest of the arc at that time that he he was broken you feel me so the fact that he did this 180 and completely want to kind of kill Kagaya instead of locking him up in Patmos. It's leading further and further, besides not only Shay and him making the mask, but for Tevin and his response to Shay back in like chapter 19 or something, episode 19. I think, I think they showed them back that far, but let me just go make sure. Let me just go make sure. Was it 19? No, I don't think it was 19. Maybe it was after that. Let's check. We gotta check, check. Really important. It's not this chapter. It's not that chapter. For sure, it's not that chapter. Chapter 34. Episode 34. Season 1, episode 34. So now we're really leading more and more into that. That type of future, you feel me? So, one of the things I really enjoy is that although these guys are they're still young, they're still wet behind the ears, they're, they're starting to understand what it really means to be a protector, you feel me? And Tevin actually kind of Kind of learned that lesson um, towards the end of the last encounter um, in season two with the other guy. Hold on, I'm trying to go back to the uh, current chapter. Hold on, we're just going to do the easy, but I'm not doing that. We're not doing that. A bop, bingy bop, bingy boop. Okay. So now we he knows what it means to be a protector. And we kind of see, see that character being shaped in this interaction with Gaia. Um, he is considered one of the gods here later on, but hey, I'm pretty sure the gods here has to make that distinction between, you know what I'm saying, killing somebody and, and locking them up in Patmos. Because sometimes it may be safer to, to, to kill a Kimio rather than, or unalive a Kimio rather than lock them up in Patmos because it's a chance of escape. And this one, it seems that it's, it's no logic behind it. This is all emotion. But one thing I really enjoy is Kagaya still treating them as kids, still treating them as if they were behind the ears because yeah, they're still, they're they're more experienced now, but compared to him, they're still kind of wet behind the ears. But for him to say like, you guys are putting all this on the line for, and you don't even know what's inside the box. And for, for Tevin to say, bro, you're, 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 you're overconfidence in your intelligence, bro, is your problem, bro, because Based on what you have, all your forces here. That's all we need to know. I don't. I don't really need to know what's going on with the chapter. No, I mean, not chapter. With the with the boxes, you feel me? I just need to know that you guys are here. You guys want to end humanity. That's y'all goal. Y'all want a race full of chemios. Y'all have the ideals of Cain. What else do I need? And so I really do enjoy that portion as well. So now, the sauciest part of the chapter or episode. Is when, is when Kagaya acknowledged Leo and his battalion, but he tells them, like, bro, your tent could probably take care of this tent. However, we have you have bigger fish that's going to attack you if you attempt to fry meat. And then you get to pan over to Val. You get to pan over to Val. He said, hey, bro, just look. Just look. 
just this one this one thing right here this one thing right here is so fire to me bro this choreography is so simplistic but it's also so fire and so important to show the the sarcastic nature of kagaya as well when he's in that green mask so i hope they actually take advantage of kagaya's personality in of itself because although he has complete controls over his emotions logically speaking you can't necessarily control your emotions so all you have to do is fluster him enough to the point where he's not able to shift between masks so easily you feel me and so then it pans over the vial bro and tevin gets scared he doesn't even, i don't think tevin's seen vial up until this point but he knows about vial which is fire but that's all we get for this chapter um i definitely think that i want to say that uh jamie's gonna pretty much take care of all the, the all the troops uh Val is gonna watch kagaya and then if kagaya needs any help he's actually going to jump in and he's gonna hit anton he's not gonna hit tevin because he's gonna try to hit tevin but he's not gonna be able to draw blood prep tevin because of tevin's high and his durability because he is in rhino high which has the most durability out of all of his hides um but anton he's really susceptible to getting stabbed he's been getting shanked this entire series he's been getting shanked this entire series so for him to be able to to stab anton is more likely and also we will get more of an explanation of his talent because we see his talent being used but we don't know exactly why leo told uh, uh rokash not to get stabbed by his talent or don't let him slash you with that sword but anyway this is all i got for this review make sure you guys like comment and subscribe down below uh let me know what your thoughts is you know what i'm saying hey boy your boy be reading them comments your boy be reading them comments but anyway be your boy wolf nar i'm out